Hello there and welcome to another edition of Impact Stories on AAU TV. Impact Stories comes to you live from the studios of the Association of African Universities. But today our camera has rolled to the University of Ghana where I'm going to talk to an expert, an academic who talks computers, speaks computers, and everything he does is about computers. His interest is in the Internet of Things and in artificial intelligence. I will introduce the guest after this short break. back from the break this is impact stories and I'm privileged to be talking to a computer expert in the name of Professor Ferdinand Apier to Katriku welcome to AAU TV thank you very much probably heard about you even though you seem to be an unsung hero in academia today we are delving into your past can you tell us a little bit about who Professor Katriku is well, that's interesting. Thank you so much. Um, what should I say? Where do I start? I, my name is Ferdinand Apietu Kachu, like you rightly said, but I like to refer to myself as Wawa Katakmane Belebla for the second. Oh my goodness, <laughs> you are a chief. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't make yourself one, well, nobody will make you one. Exactly. Well. <laughs> well. So, yes, uh, I come from San Tropez in Benoit, in the, now the Oti region of mm. Ghana. Uh, that's where my mother actually comes from. I was born there, raised there, but I went to school in Hopway, mm -hmm. uh, which is just like a stone throw away. My mm -hmm. father comes from the Lobi Hong mm -hmm. Ye yeah, Asem, yeah. uh, if you understand that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Asem. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I went to Hopway EP Primary School. Okay. And then later on to the EP Middle School. Uh, uh, I was a naughty boy. Hold on. EP, it means it was a, a religious school, school but you were a naughty boy. It's also a very naughty boy, you know, when I, I started want... school. Okay. Um, class one, I went to school quite early. Uh, my mother sent to class one, and then um, I never went to school. I never stayed in school. Mm. Uh, she sends me to school. By the end of the day, I was at the river. Well, okay. I spent the whole day in the river. Mm. I get back home, oh, it's last. <laughs> and then marched frog march to school the following day. By the close of the day, I'm back in the river. Where was that? In that the was primary late, one. Late very early sixties. Early sixties, yes. okay. Very early sixties. Mm. So it was a you know, my mother we had a battle of wheels. Mm. She was determined to keep me in school and I was determined to stay out of school. Were you the only child? No, we two. Okay. Yeah. But then I didn't realize what I was doing. I was just an innocent boy. I didn't know there was anything wrong with it. Mm. So, uh, but by the end of that first year, uh, they repeated me. In school? Yes, that class one. <laughs> 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 they repeated me class one. Mm. And I was with my nephew. You know, we were age mates, but he was my nephew. Mm. And uh, he had to go to class two. And then he went to class two. They gave him a sum he couldn't do. They caned him. So I told him, you see, that's why I said you should stay in class one. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go to class two? Mm. There you go. But then after that, uh, my mother was very determined. So okay. I stayed in school. Right. And uh, after class one, I didn't take to the swimming again in the river. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, what happened was that, it's an interesting story. I one day went swimming, and the river currents were much stronger than I thought. And I was being carried away. I was practically drowning. Oh. And a lady, I don't know who it was, pulled me out of the water onto the bank of the streams. Mm. And since then, that was the end of my love affair with the river. Mm. So I then stayed in school. I attended the EP primary school, you know. Then started the common trance when I was in form two. Mm. And then gained admission to St. Paul's secondary school. Okay. Then, mm. uh, but but yeah. then, where... where what were your career ambitions as you were going through school? Uh, I said I wanted to be a lawyer. Okay. You know, from an early age, I thought I would be a lawyer, you know. W was somebody mentoring you or were no, you no, looking no, up to no, somebody? Nobody. You like, just wanted to be a lawyer? Yes, we come from a very poor background. Okay. And if you know what San is, you know, farming community, very poor, poverty, 
Uh, we had to carry, or a lot of people had to carry firewood to hawk where to sell in order to make a living, mm. and that sort of thing. It was poor, poverty. And you, know, you saw a uh, lawyer, being a lawyer as a no, breakthrough? I was, I was just an argumentative. Okay. And I like to argue debates, mm. you know, even as a little boy. Uh, so when I was growing up, you know, maybe by the time I go to Serum School, I thought I would be a lawyer. Right. You know. Uh, but my uncle had other ideas. <laughs> oh, so your mm. uncle changed your yeah, actually he career. was the he was a ribboned father. Okay. So I went to St. Paul's Church, which was a Catholic school, uh, and uh, he happened to be the headmaster of that school, mm. and he was a great man. Uh, oh. and if you talk to anybody who went to school to St. Paul's at the time, he was headmaster. Uh, they have a lot to say about him. Oh. The way he mentored and nurtured is isn't. He actually impacted on our lives. Mm -hmm. so that's, uh, for that reason, those of us who feel strongly about that have even set up a foundation in his memory. Oh, his oh that's great. Yeah, so we go around secondary schools, uh, inviting people to come and give talk to mm -hmm. them and, you know, about life and how to, you know. So we've had several, uh, about eight lectures. Mm -hmm. We have had Professor, Puf uh, Professor Kufi Awuno, Professor um, uh, Kufi Nti, uh, Professor Akotia, you know, and many mm. Professor Jangman, yeah. and many others coming into these secondary schools to talk to these kids, mm. you know, about uh, life in general, their career choices, mm. what they do. Is your uncle of uh, blessed memory? Yes. Okay. And he passed on in 2004. Okay. May he still rest in peace. Amen. So we went to St. Paul's in school, and uh, from there, completed sixth form in 81. Okay. That was the time that the Ronnie school came in. Oh. Mm. Right. Okay, in going to St. Paul's Royal School, I was maybe, I wasn't maybe, you wouldn't call me a very studious student okay. person, but I was a general, you know. Average student. I was more than uh, above average. Above average. I was more than average. Okay. I was never first or second. Second, but you were not but in the middle. No, I was not in between. Middle. Top I, ten, I yes. guess. When we had a Form five had a speech and prize giving the. I practically collected all the prizes. Wow. <laughs> Even though I was not the first. Okay. <laughs> but you, I think in subject areas you are yeah, very I was good. good. I was, okay. I was a, an all rounder. Mm. I was doing mm. well in every subject. subject, except for a few. Okay. Let's see if you say maybe mm. a way or Latin or music. I don't do so well. Oh, there was Latin there. Yes, we were taught Latin. Yes, so I wasn't doing too well in subjects like music and. Okay. Away and even away I was doing well Latin, yeah. and so when you average the max, then you know I don't Shoot tend to up. I don't yeah. tend to <laughs> come up oh, okay. in the top because when my colleagues are scoring let's say ninety percent or more in music, Other, yes. I'll be scoring twenty percent. <laughs> 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 so if I beat them by five marks in all the other subjects, <laughs> yeah, then it shows you <laughs> that they would cancel out mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. I, I, I I did. So. I thought I would be, I will go and read literature, mm. government, and maybe physics. I love physics. And this is for? No, in the university. In the university. But they said that combination was not good. But yeah. physics, literature. literature. Yes. That tells you, no, the, the sort of uh, odd student it, that I was. It was <laughs> quite odd. Yeah, very <laughs> odd. Uh, so I so thought maybe I would do law. But then my uncle said, look, do science subjects. OK. So I, well, I said, I should do science. I did science. <laughs> because you love physics. Yeah, I love physics. Yeah. You know, I love physics. So I did science. Uh, but I did literature as well. Because I did uh, form five O levels. I did nine subjects instead of the usual eight. Okay. You did nine? Nine. Mm. Uh, Since form, I did five subjects instead of the usual four. four. Yeah. Or you can say three. that, yes, three. Three and then the yes. general. Yeah, yeah, so I was doing yeah. one more. Wow. So at each level, I was doing one more subject. And you passed them? I passed them. Were you, were you a student leader? Yes, I was actually made a, the school prefect. Oh, actually, the okay. school prefect. <laughs> I was made a prefect. <coughs> and uh, that was another story in, in itself. So St. Paul's was a hard place, mm. you know, very difficult. Uh, in those days, was it because of the king competition, or was it because the facilities, the were, facilities not there, were not there? But you made it. So I mean, you can't imagine uh, some of our teachers were sitting the same exams as we were. Really? So, so they had the previous year, maybe they had sat the exams, they didn't do, do well. well, 
to enter the university also. So they were employed to then teach. Right. So we're doing the same things and they were also sitting the same exams. Mm. As so you can imagine uh, what was a big issue. You know, we have to trek from St. Paul's campus to Denu town to fetch water for the kitchen to cook for us. That's the student. That's the student. And it's not a, it's like two, two three kilometers. Daily? Yes. Huh. Saturdays is a different thing where you go in, you do your washing, you bathe there mm. before you bring in the water. Sometimes you have to go twice. What, was it pipe board water? Yes. Okay. Um, if not pipe, I can't be recall exactly, but either from a well or somewhere. Something but okay. in them town there was some water okay. that we can get in there. Mm. Bring to. So it was difficult. Mosquitoes or something. <laughs> Another issue. Yeah, you know, the mm. lagoon was not far from you, so yeah. So it, this was it was breeding mosquitoes. mosquitoes right. Right. So St. Paul's was a difficult mm. school, uh, but mm. I think it prepared us well for life. Right. You know, anybody went to St. Paul's in those days, you know, we call ourselves conquerors. Because okay. actually our motto says, "In uh, bono malum," in doing good you conquer evil. Wow. So uh, we call ourselves conquerors, mm. you know. So that's my. So well, computer is from 1981. Then the Rollins School came in, mm. and uh, naturally I was drifted in <laughs> to support that. Okay. So I joined the task force, mm. the student task force, and I became the uh, district coordinator of the student task force for Hawaii. Okay. Uh, so activism. You yeah. know, student activism has been part of me. Okay. Uh, because, I mean, you see the social injustice, the poverty in your area, you see, and nobody has to tell you. Mm. So, so it's just erupted. Yes. Uh, so I was part and parcel of that, uh, this thing, until we realized that, uh, some of us realized that this is not what we actually bargained for. Mm. You know, some of the excesses of that revolution and the things that we're doing were young. Uh, but some of the SSCs and the other things, you know, mm -hmm. we saw that this is not the right way we should go and we felt that we were not too comfortable. But, but that was in 79, no? no that, the 79 one was, was different. Yes, there yeah, was okay. the 79 one. Okay. And then there was the 81. The 81. That was the 31st December. 31st December. So okay, going into yes. uh, January. Into January. 92. Okay, 82, sorry. Yes, 82. Right, right. So we looked at it and said, no, one must find a way out. Okay. And, uh, so uh, I managed to get a scholarship through the Soviet Union mm. uh, to go out there to pursue my my studies. Okay. You know? So that's my that's the early yeah, part of my of your life. life. Oh, yeah, very <laughs> interesting. <laughs> very interesting. So mm. wh when you wanted to go to the Soviet mm. Union, or the scholarship opportunities mm. in which uh, academic disciplines mm. were they? There were many disciplines. So you apply okay. for one. Okay. I actually did that to go and do food processing technology. I don't know why, you know. Was uh, it in vogue? Um, I, I wouldn't say so, but I just felt that, look, from the agrarian area I come from, mm. it's something that might be useful to mm. to us. Okay. So I applied to go and do food processing technology, and uh, when I got to the Soviet Union, I realized that my institute had been giving information, economic information processing. I said, my gosh, <laughs> I'm not an economist, you know, <laughs> I'm interested in that. So I discussed this with the, uh, the faculty, the, the leadership, the, the administration, and I said, look, I'm a science student, you know, so it's rather than doing information processing, why don't I do computer science, right. which is close to it? Mm -hmm. So they agreed and said, okay, mm -hmm. go and do computer science. So actually computer engineering. Mm. So they changed the course for me to do computer engineering mm. and here I am. <laughs> well, um, so you went to Soviet Union. The then Soviet Union. The then Soviet Union. Yes. But the issue was, if you were given, what did you say again? A scholarship. No, the program. The, uh, food processing technology. Food processing technology. Yes. And you went to do computer engineering. Yes. Did it require you to study the language for a period before? Yes, actually. For, before you, enrollment? Yes, when you go to the Soviet Union in those days, uh, you do a one year language course. Okay. So, which is compulsory for mm. everyone. Mm. So, uh, during that first year, you study the language 
with what I would call the A-level equivalent of the, the discipline area. Okay. So you do mathematics, you do physics, you do chemistry, you know, technical drawing, you do all of those things, mm. all in Russian language. Wow. So you do that for the one year. When you do well, it pass, then you move on to the institute now where you're supposed to do your actual studies. Right. Yeah, so this is what normally happens. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So you completed in 1989. Yes. I could see from your academic records that mm. every four years mm. you move up the academic ladder. <laughs> every <laughs> four years. Actually from 89, <laughs> your next one was 92, 92 next so one was 96, yes. next one was 2000, no. next one was 2014. <laughs> so that four year progression. <laughs> so you're going to work as true <laughs> when you completed. Yes. What happened yes. before you took on the next yes. academic degree program? Yes. When I, I, like I said, I, I, I was a very like studious person, mm -hmm. you know. But I just do. I, I think I've been blessed. God, God has good. blessed me in numbers because I don't put in a lot of effort into my studies. But I happen to just do well. When mm -hmm. you go to do an exam and students come, my colleagues come complaining that it was difficult. I always find that no, I had something to answer, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. So I completed very well with what they call at Lichnik, uh, so with the distinction. Okay. So they offered me uh, the opportunity to do a PhD. Okay. All right. So I accepted it, but that was a time the Soviet Union was also crumbling. Crumbling, and uh, uh, Gorbachev. Yes. And I realized that it may not be all that safe to mm. remain there. Okay. So I decided that work. So you left. I left. I left for the UK and uh, got an opportunity to do laser engineering at mm -hmm. St. Andrews University. Mm -hmm. It's one of the best universities in the UK. Well, St. Uh, Andrews. Andrews yes. yeah. So I studied laser engineering mm -hmm. and pulse power technology, which was very like high tech discipline. Mm -hmm. And I was very happy with that actually. The experience there was something else. Okay. So on completing that I said, what am I going to do? This was like a high-tech discipline, and uh, you're looking for job opportunities in the military, mm -hmm. right. in the atomics, uh, weapon, weaponry yes. area. Mm -hmm. And uh, nobody was going to employ you to go into their weaponry establishments. You know? this, it wasn't that it was dawning on me. Okay. Uh, that, you know, uh, and I had a number of interviews, and uh, they asked me if I was a British citizen. I said, no, they said, no. sorry. You know? So I said, okay, I'm not just going to hang around here and uh, wait. So let me do something. So I decided to enroll to do uh, another master's. Yeah, a PhD this time. A PhD, yes. okay. Yeah. So at City University, Ooh. and I, I met some two wonderful men there as my supervisor, Dr. Rachman from uh, Bangladesh, and Professor Grattan, who is Irish. Okay. Um, I've had a lifelong relationship, relationship with him. With okay. People. So. I was working with them, we did some interesting work on uh, photonic device modeling. We were looking at how you know, light can now be used in computing, basically. So building what you call photonic devices. Mm -hmm. So it's those devices that allow light communication. Mm -hmm. So what we were actually doing was uh, building mathematical models. You know, so characterizing these things, how they, how they will behave. But whilst I was doing this, I was thinking, let's African mm -hmm. boy, <laughs> you need to survive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I looked at the study this scenario and said, Look, mm, why teaching is a good profession here, yeah. you can easily get a job. Mm. Nobody, so why don't you go and do a programming, yes, a teaching program? So I took a one year mm -hmm. off, enrolled at uh, King's College, right, for their degree. I mean. Was great certificate course in education mm. to become a qualified teacher. teacher. You, you need to be, you have what they call a, a qualified teacher status to be able to teach, teach. in right. grant maintained schools in England. Mm. So I did that and immediately I got a job in a school right. to be teaching. Right. You know, so whilst I was teaching, I was then con 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 continuing with my yeah, PhD, PhD studies. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and then when I completed the PhD straight away, I was offered an opportunity at uh, Middlesex University mm, okay. yeah, where to, I to lecture. To lecture, right? You know, so. so why didn't you become 
a diaspora. Oh. Because people <laughs> yeah. with such golden opportunities would not have really want to come to Africa or they would have acquired some citizenship yes. and status. Well, I should say my family is still there. Okay. Uh, but I love my country. You love your country. Yeah. And I want to contribute many, in a meaningful way. Right. You know? yes. And then you say to yourself, okay, you can achieve, you can do a lot there. Mm -hmm. But when you again study the system there, unless you just want to think around with things, what precise contribution are you going to make there? Because a lot of things are set up, the systems are set up. You know? mm. So you're not actually going to do anything Mm -hmm. That would, you know, or stress change, you. Yes, yeah. anything much. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I, I've been out in the company for a long time now. Yes. Yes. I was also fed up. So, you felt homesick. Yes. We'll come yes. to, yes. to how, come how you came to <laughs> Africa. We are going on a very short break. This is Impact Stories on AU TV. I'm talking to Professor Katriku, who has just narrated his humble beginnings up to where he went to UK to do his PhD. Let's go on a short break. Welcome back from the break. This is Impact Stories, and I'm talking to Professor Kachiruku. Prof, you just said you had an interesting time in the UK after you had left the Ukraine. So what happened? What found you in Africa? Yes, uh, like I said, um, you know, having lived outside for a long time, you sort of begin to feel homesick, and then you feel that you need to also to help your home country, do something to help your home country, because you look at uh, the country and see why it's going to look. So what contribution am I making? And I had some very wonderful friends in the UK and we mm. had long discussions about how we can contribute mm. to uh, Mother Ghana. Uh, but then there was always this thing of how do you come back? Mm. Because you think, where am I going to start? You know, so a lot of people, a lot of us were hesitant in coming back even though there's a desire to come back. They don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. There are no overtures from the, the government in Africa mm -hmm. that we need these skills and you know, giving you incentives. Uh, or there was no communication not, channel? Not as far as I know. Okay. Uh, we didn't. I was quite active politically, so mm -hmm. I was sort of, mm -hmm. you know, even the Soviet Union had lots of problems because of political yeah. activism. activism. Yeah, but uh, mm -hmm. that's a different story. Uh -huh. uh, so, anyway. So one day I told a good, very good friend of mine, uh, Kokua Dumja, that I was leaving. Yes, and, that. Yes, and then he said, ah, he didn't. I said, uh, he didn't mean I should go. Why am I going? I said, but this is what we've been talking about all the time that we need to go back. But I said, he didn't. I didn't mean it that way. I didn't mean I should go. <laughs> I said, no. Well, I have to go. So 2001, I first came to see what was happening. So in 2001, I came home, look at the scenes. 2002, each year I came in, you know, just to study what was going on in the country. And then finally, 2008, I decided to come in. Yeah. But um, I wanted to do something on my own, uh, to be a bit independent. So I wanted to start a farming project. So I came in to do farming two years in the village. With all your academic degrees yes. you wanted to do farming yes. was it mechanized farming or peasantry farming well somewhere in between in between yes so i felt that you see to actually contribute in a certain way you need to build a base yeah from which you can then stand up and launch it mm. and, and, but that was a disaster the farming was a disaster it was a disaster maybe you were an absentee farmer no 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 i was right there I was right in the village. Mm. Yes. Though, you see, sometimes we talk a lot about the problems with the Ghanaian worker, the need to. You hear all these anecdotal stories about them, you yeah. know, what happens, you know, they, and they, uh, unless you're in there, yeah. you don't know what happens. Yeah, in fact, know. someone said that uh, some of the Ghanaian workers, even if you put something on your eyebrow, they'll steal it, and you didn't know. 
right in front of you, they'll be swindling you. Yeah, you know? true. So it was a bit difficult. It was a disaster. Mm. And uh, I said, okay, after two years, it's time to pack and go. So I went back. Oh, no. I went back to the UK to what? Re strategize. Okay. <laughs> to come back. To come back. Mm. So I went back for two years. And this time I said, okay, when I'm calm, I'm not going to go straight into farming, but I'll come. As an academic? Uh, yes, as an academic. Wow. And they use that as a basis to see to what launch what yourself what again is into the system. And I've been here for almost 10 years now. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> yes. Wow. Uh, and I've not gone back. Okay, so when you got here, mm -hmm. you were employed by the University of Ghana? Yes, yes. And what particularly were you employed to do as an assistant lecturer or no. as a senior academic? Uh, a senior oh, academic. Okay. Actually, coming here was another thing because I probably wouldn't have come here, but for a year, a lady, uh, Matilda, uh, a champ on Wilson, this woman was very instrumental in ensuring that I come. Mm. I first sent in an application, I actually sent it to computer engineering, but for some reason it landed on her desk yeah. and she was on the phone to me. She would not give me a breather. Hey, you have to come, and blah, 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 blah. you can't do this, you can't. Almost every week she would call me, mm. you know, just putting pressure on me to come. Was the computer department established there? Yes, the computer science was here. Okay. But they were struggling. All right. The department was C capacity wise. Is it the team. infrastructure or is it everything. human resource? Everything. Okay. Everything. So I said, This lady, she really, really wants me to come. Mm. You know, and I also want to come. So rather than go to computer engineering, I'll come to computer science. So I came. So what's the difference? Well, the engineers design and engineer devices. Okay. And computer scientists, we build software basically, you know. Okay. There's a lot of commonality between them, though. Yeah, right. but, uh, so the woman was in computer, in the computer science. science. Yes. Yeah, okay. yes. So but you had applied to do computer engineering. engineering. And right. my application landed, my dossier landed on her table, table by mistake. Wow. <laughs> so she hijacked <laughs> it and pulled me here, okay. made sure I came here. Uh, and I, I actually uh, commend her for that. Mm. Not for her, I might have been hesitant again coming because come it she tells you that. They wanted you. Mm. You know, you don't want to go somewhere you are not wanted. You know, this they really wanted you to come. Mm. So I came in and I was asked to head the department. Mm. You know, uh, so I took over the headship of the department from here. Okay. And uh, when I came here, you would not believe the mess. Tell you, mm. you go, we had one lab down there. If you go there, it was soaking with sewage. I'm sorry. I mean, the whole lab. Yeah. The, there's a toilet facility upstairs, and then you know, it it, when it flashes, it just goes into that lab. Then it was a mess. It, mm -hmm. it smelled. You know, mm -hmm. that was a lab. Mm -hmm. The floors were sinking in. You know, you know, health and has uh, safety hazard basically. Right. You know, uh, and then the staff was not there. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, they are not motivated. They are not motivated. Mm -hmm. you know, there was no one. You know. <laughs> so I, well, I wanted something okay. where I can make an impact. Yes. Well, here you are. <laughs> so we had to start. Uh, so how did you restructure the place? I'm very interested <laughs> in that. Well, uh, the first thing I said was that there was no way we we're going to build this department if we don't have our own credit program. Okay. Because you cannot attract anybody with a PhD from outside to come and teach here. Mm. One, nobody will come for the money. Yeah. Two, there's nothing. Nothing to show. To show. The right. labs were not there. There was no facility. Mm. I mean, okay, if there's no money for an academic, either they have facilities to do their research or there's money. That's right. And none of those was in existence. You know, so nobody from outside would want to come here. So the, the only way that we're going to build capacity in terms of human resources is to have our own graduate program. Right. But then to have your own graduate program, you must, first of all, have the faculty to teach that graduate program. Mm -hmm. Which you didn't have. Which you didn't have. So no more lighting. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was a kind of dream we needed to solve. All right. So, well, uh, the first thing I did was to leverage on some of my previous political experiences by setting up, a, what do you call it, a group known as a, as a Committee of Heads of Computer Science Departments. Mm. 
So that, that was just to bring in the heads of departments from all the universities around mm. computer science departments. So we, we, we talk you, yeah. and discuss issues, see what the issues are. Mm. So from there I got to, because nobody knew me, I've been out of this country for a long time, so I didn't have any contacts. Mm. I lost all contacts of all my schoolmates, etc. So I, I then began to make know people, mm. and then people also started knowing me. You. So uh, having done that, I knew a number of people, and uh, I made one particularly very useful decision was to convince one Dr. Jamal from Gimpa yeah. to move from there to here. Um, wow. <laughs> so I was sort of pushing him from you there. You did? Yes. And that was one of the best decisions I made mm. when I came. Because uh, I, I saw him, someone who was very uh, focused, you know, and highly motivated mm. and could, could be a good... Make an impact. Yes. yes. So together we developed, actually I started developing the graduate program, then he came and helped me, we finished developing the graduate program. We I had contacts outside okay. as well, so we put those lecturers in as uh, visiting fellows, etc. Okay. And then a few other contacts, we had to put them in as uh, uh, lecturers, mm -hmm. you know. We had a minimum number to start, but we needed a, 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 a bit more. Oh, well, how easy was it to <laughs> convince academic board? <laughs> it wasn't that easy. It wasn't. They, you need to do your homework. Yeah. Uh, so that was a time the university was also restructuring its PhD. PhD. The, in, one into the collegiate system, yeah. and also the PhD, the PhD program to a four-year PhD program. Right. So I took a very good opportunity of that, and uh, what I did was first, when you develop the program, you just don't send it at board. You can see the key people and say, look, yeah. this is what I've developed. Look at it for me. That's lobbying. <laughs> <laughs> no. Look at it for me. Point out any deficiencies that may be in there so yeah. that I correct them before they come to the board. Sure. So I did that. Mm. So I saw the number of people who would go through the documents, you know, advice on what I should do, tighten up things. And I also tried to, as much as possible, follow closely because I've been working in the UK you know the importance of following rules. Mm. So if they say do A, B, C, D, just make sure you do the A, B, C, D, the evidence yeah. is there to support it. Yeah. So <laughs> ours was one of the first, if not the first program under the four year program to be approved. Wow. Let me, <laughs> let before the, the curriculum, yes. were you following the structure in the UK? No, we were following, following the University of Ghana structure. structure. Okay. But the thing is, you need to follow the formats that they've given. Okay. If if they say you should address point A, make sure you address, so address point, point A. A. Okay. You know, if there's any evidence to provide, you support it. Okay. Uh, a lot of times you go around, you see that you don't speak to the points. Mm. So mm. I make sure that we did everything exactly the way they wanted it, mm. so that you can't come back. So our program went through. Seamlessly. Seamlessly. Wow. Any this. So it was one of the very first to be approved, mm. you know. And um, so <laughs> that was that. So we, we got at this thing. And they did attract many students a to lot. computer science? A lot. A okay. lot. We can't cope with the, the, the demand. The demand. Mm. We can't cope mm. with the demand. Mm. The last year, when we uh, opened our portal for the graduates, Admissions. We have we had over 150 people applying. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, we can only Absolute take like capacity of like 15. 15. Yes. One five. Yes. Are the masters and that's for the MPhil. MPhil. Yes. You know, so you can you can, you can see the mm -hmm. for the masters we do it, we now have started a, an evening masters program. Okay. And with there we can take like 50 students. You know. So but the, the demand is just because there are but a lot of people in industry working yeah. who want to upgrade. Upgrade. Yes, and the opportunity is not there for them. Now, why are we not using um, ICTs or distance education? Or for computer science is different? No, you could, uh, but you need to do your homework well. Mm. Uh, a lot of talk has been on you know, this online teaching and learning, but even to different quality material is an issue. Okay. Because a lot of uh, lecturers or academics still don't understand how to develop quality uh, Teaching. online materials. Yeah. So for example, you find last semester, and the students were complaining, you know, a lecturer doing a three-hour video 
session for students to watch. Come it's on. too long. It's too long. It's too long. You know, I mean, mm. it's so long. You know, so they need to understand the look. For such things, you need to sort of break them down into maximum 10 minutes mm. sessions of topic, 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 topic. Yeah. So that student can easily take one little thing, watch for five, eight minutes, 10 minutes at most, mm -hmm. leave it, and then go on to something else. So unless we have the time to do that properly, you know, the online teaching is yes. So really a lot of, we have so many complaints from the students, mm. you know, mm. about the online teaching, okay. you know, and they, they need to have face-to-face -face interaction, mm. you know. Yes, we can still do the online, put the material there, but we must meet the students. Mm. You know, you must see them actually do the things. If you say, okay, write a piece of code to do this, stand by the student and see them do the coding. And exactly. it gives them some confidence yes. before they can go on and then try and do it on their own. But you are interested in artificial intelligence. Yes. So why are you not deploying these two, tools, two years to you know, push for online teaching? Especially in your field in computer yes, science. Yes, we, 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 the sort of things we're doing with, uh, in terms of research, uh, the sort of things we are looking at uh, are things to do with uh, our agricultural sector. Okay. Yeah, so, are we able to detect diseases, plant diseases? You know, if you look at the leaf, are you able to find out if there's something wrong with that leaf? Uh, if you have any data, you know, are you able to tell from? So, we're doing some work recently where we deploy sensors on riverbeds to what do you call it? Uh, pick up the river the river parameters. Okay. okay. Now, an issue with wireless sensors and riverbeds is that um, the battery can run out. Okay. So you need to conserve the battery. Mm. So the issue is: is there any way we can find? Can we find a way of? not actually taking the measurements. Mm -hmm. If we take the measurements if, uh, once every 10 minutes, is there any way that we can do it, let's say, once every half an hour? Okay. And then make predictions. So use some AI techniques to make predictions as okay. to what the other readings might be. Sure. And then we can then probably uh, do some yes, simulations. Yes, and, you know, interpolations or something okay. to find if the, our predictions actually did work, you know. So those are the sort of things we are looking at, you mm -hmm. know, because we want to do things that would have a direct impact, impact. on the our, our economy. economy. That's true. Yeah. So, yeah. So the, the online teaching is an interesting thing, mm -hmm. but there's still a lot to, to, to be, be done. done. Okay. Uh, so ten years, you are still at Legon. I'm still at Legon, and uh, I believe yeah. in the next ten years until maybe. You, you reach your retirement age. Retirement is just next year. So. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. any awards from the university or no, elsewhere? No. Academic uh, awards? No. Or? It's just it's some of these unsung people. We just go around doing our things and then uh, we do it on the quiet, you know. Uh, nobody hears about this, nobody knows about this. But uh, what the world you, knows <laughs> about its unsung <laughs> heroes. What, what some of us are happy about. Uh, is the impact we've had on our students. Mm. Uh, they mm. come in here and I mean if you talk to any of our graduate students they tell you that uh, they didn't realize mm. you know what they were missing, how much impact we've made on them. I was just going to ask uh, who are you mentoring? Oh so many people, so mm. many people. Uh, we just had our first uh, PhD student graduating, Dr. Kofi Sapon, okay. uh, who also had the uh, one of the best graduating gra uh, students mm -hmm. award. We've had uh, uh, another one, of PhD student also graduating. Uh, he is now employed in the department. Okay. Professor Pong is employed in the department. Okay. Uh, we've sent so many students outside mm -hmm. to do graduate programs. And okay. uh, I can tell you one now, Joyce, who is in the UK, completed a master's in robotics there. Uh, we continue to support them. You know. Talking about Joyce and robotics, mm -hmm. why are females so adamant in picking science-related programs? How can we demystify science to female graduates or students? Uh, that's, a, that's a difficult one. Uh, because they, they, I don't think there have many role models for them. Mm. So you need to, I think, build that base where there are role models that they can see. People that can inspire them. Okay. You know, then when they see that, actually, since I've been in these departments, 
in most of the years, the first class students have been females. Really? Yes. You don't believe it. Mm -hmm. Practically every year, if you look at the, those grades in the first class, they are girls. Yes. Right. You know, we tell you they are good. They yeah. are. And they constitute only a small percentage of the, of the population. population. Yeah. You know, so, mm -hmm. the, the, the so we should be celebrating those people so that the, the rest people know about them, about them. that mm -hmm. they can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but of course there is a difference in the sense that the boys are more adventurous. Okay. So the boys are not afraid to just take the computer and try to do some coding and you know. Mm -hmm. So they build things, they des design things, yeah. and they are not afraid. Okay. But the girls are less. Adventurous, mm -hmm. so when it so comes they to get stuck to yes, okay. so reading, understanding, knowing the, that they do, mm -hmm. but actually, hands on doing things mm -hmm. is something they are a bit, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm comfortable with that. Uh, okay, they are good. So, Prof, you know, in academia, if you don't publish, mm -hmm. you perish. You perish. How perish. many publications do you have? What do I even know? <laughs> uh, I don't have kind of number of publications. Uh, mm -hmm with a number of citations mm -hmm. which run into in their citations run into hundreds wow. you know, uh, publications maybe around 70 or so uh, general publications i do have some very top quality uh, journals as well including mm -hmm. the journal of light wave technology mm -hmm. uh, journal of quantum electronics mm -hmm. you know these are like uh, are you still publishing? Yes, I'm still publishing every year. <laughs> we wow. publish. You know. wow. I, I think that most of my work, even though you teach, we still publish. Okay. Know. We still publish. Now every year we publish at least a paper or two. Okay. Now mm -hmm. that you are entering into your retirement mm -hmm. age, are you going to change the focus of the publication to be writing stories for your children? Oh. Or <laughs> you'll still be publishing yes. academic yeah, academic. in academic yeah, journals? Yes. There, there are so many things that we have not touched upon. Mm. You know. There are so many um, areas that we haven't mm -hmm. looked at. There are so many problems that have not been solved. Mm -hmm. uh, to which the solutions are easy. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I mean, if you take the recent rule in the election, mm -hmm. and we can't even count or cool it. Yeah. This is something that could be easily solved. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. where, but then are we ready? You know, are we ready to have you know systems in place? Uh, to solve, solve the problem, this, yes. uh, or we benefit from the chaos, and therefore we allow it to continue. Of course, people will benefit yes. from so, any situation. Yes. So, uh, mm. Yeah. Anyway, academics mm. don't retire, so no. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Prof, now let's talk about mm. an aspect I have not mentioned. Mm. I guess from your humble beginnings, mm. schooled in a EP, mm. EP primary school, primary school, then to school, a Catholic, Catholic school. Mm. Are you a Christian? Well, I, I was born and baptized a Christian, but of late I begin to question the whole Christian beliefs. beliefs. I would say that I'm spiritual, Great. but I'm, not, I'm no longer religious. Okay. I don't no longer subscribe Ooh. to any particular religious religion. Mm -hmm. Because I think mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's so much, mm -hmm. you know, okay. that leaves you. Uh, so m much, much questions, really questions to be answered. answered. Yes, in, re in religious, in yes, know, religious. Okay, I get it. I get so, it. So yes, I'm more spiritual. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and uh, you know, you look at this world. You know, there are so many things that you don't understand. But that is what scientists do. Scientists are always asking questions. Yes. So you are posing the questions. Yes, you know. Anyway, let's leave the spiritual matters mm. to. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> yes. What about your family? Yes, my family is still out in the, in the UK. Okay. I have five lovely children okay. who are out there. Mm. Uh, mm. If they want to come to Ghana, they are welcome to come. They do come every year, okay. or once every year. Some kind of a homecoming. Yes. Are they inclined <coughs> to, do they have any inclination to come to Ghana or they are more attracted to the UK? I, I don't, at this point, I don't think they've made any decision per se. Okay. They're just being children, you know, <laughs> okay. uh, living a life, enjoying themselves. Mm. Uh, I, I guess when they grow up and uh, by the time they finish, they are still young. Now, as you are more or less a diaspora, mm. and I believe in UK, you may be interested in sports. Which sporting discipline <laughs> are you so <laughs> interested in? Uh, um, do, do you have me know? I know soccer. <coughs> Manchester? 
Well, Leicester. I, mm, I, I, I'll say that. That's I guess. I, everybody hates Man United. Oh no! <laughs> so I tend to support them. You but, do, uh, because everybody everybody hates, hates them. And then uh, West Ham, they were just behind my door, my my okay. house. So, so, you uh, so automatically you support you West Ham United. Them. But uh, I'm not a, yeah, a soccer fan. Uh, no, so much. Yeah, so much. I do watch. Let's see the Wimbledon's. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not a very. I don't go. I'm not fanatic. Not, I'm not fanatic about. about we are more political than yes, sports. You yes, know, yes. enthusiasts. Even politics now, I'm sort of quiet on it. Right. Mm, mm. Yeah, I've gone very mm. quiet again because that place you see that. Yeah. You can't just trust people. You can't, you can't trust people. They are not genuinely interested in, mm. in this country. Or its development. There's something that I say you can ask any politician, you know. Just I know that politics are as follows. Ghana has many problems. And if you tell me that you need to solve all of them, it's no, a lie. No. But just tell me one lot. single problem that if you were given the opportunity, yeah, you'd ensure that you solve that problem. And I bet you none of them will give you one single problem that they want to solve, you know, during their time. And it's a simple question. That, that tells you that. Uh, Do you like music? Yes, I used to love music. I still love music. Uh, Bob Marley. Oh, reggae. <laughs> reggae. Okay. Yeah. So, so country music. Yes, I used to love country music as well. Mm. All those uh, American country musicians. Mm. Uh, I forgot their names. Don Williams. Don Williams. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Now that you are here in Ghana, mm -hmm. what is your favorite dish? Do you even know? Uh, do you do you cook? I do cook. Yes. So what do you cook? Uh, the easiest thing that comes to me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, I love our local foods. Uh, so we have uh, something, I don't know, we call it a yolk. A yolk? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Which is like uh, so green. roasted rice, brown rice. Okay. That's been turned into flour. Mm -hmm. And then you cook this, just like you cook, uh, what do you call it? It was called wok bale. Right. And then you do this on special bean stew. Mm. Uh, I, wish, of, I wish we had all the ingredients here. That's out of this world. It tastes out of this world. <laughs> wow. Yeah, there is a saying that a good conversation mm. never ends. If you should continue talking mm. and talking, we'll take the whole day. But probably this is where we want to draw the curtains on this episode of Impact Stories, where we are celebrating you, Thank you. as an academic. Do you have any final words for the young and upcoming ones mm -hmm. on how do they have to structure themselves to pick up their careers in future? Well, yes. I would say that um, I've seen a lot of young people trying to get by by the short routes, like quick means. It doesn't work. You know, whatever you want to do, try and do it well. Try and do it very well. And once you do it well, the results will follow. You don't have to worry about where the money. The money will follow you. But uh, when you try to shortcut, you know, uh, you haven't done the thing well, and you expect the results. No, it doesn't help. Whatever you want to do, focus on it, and do it to the very best of your ability, and you will see the blessings. Thank you very much, Pro. You're most welcome. Okay, thank you. This is where we draw the curtains on this episode of Impact Stories on AETV. Stay focused and other programs on AETV. Thank you and bye.